Marshmallow Fanboy back with another review. This time of WWE Elite Collection Series 106 is Roxanne Perez and Series 107 is Cora Jade. These two are very cool figures. One is first in the line. I'm pretty sure Roxanne Perez is first in the line. I haven't gotten one, but I, you know, I don't keep up on wrestling figures real carefully, so it's possible a Roxanne Perez got past me. I'm not sure, but it doesn't say first time in the in the line anywhere. It could be that Roxanne Perez did have a, a basic figure. I think the first time in the line applies to that character, whether they are in the basic series or in the elite series. So it's possible Roxanne Perez snuck past me on one of the other uh, other lines, but I I just I don't know. I feel like it's the first time. It's absolutely the first time I saw her. Uh, I got both of these at the comic store when they came out at the comic store. So I don't know that they came out, came out, or that's just when the comic store got them. But they, they've been getting one wave of each case for a couple years now. So sometimes, you know, there's just one or two figures that I want of that wave. It wasn't like that with the Mean Gene Okerlund wave. I bought the whole thing so I could build Mean Gene Okerlund so I could pose him between the the mega powers macho man and hulk hogan well let me tell you something mean gene you know but that that was a weird super why did i go over there these are the first two that i've gotten that were in this weird packaging where most of it is paper but some of it is plastic and i don't i don't hate it i don't hate it i don't necessarily need to see the them from the knees down to know that i want the figure I can look, flip to the back and see. Although it would be nice if there was somewhere on the package that showed you what the bottom looked like in case you were getting something that had like bright orange boots or something. You're like, that's not what I was expecting at all. It was a little weird and off-putting. But this is Roxanne Perez with the belt. I don't know what this is from. Um, NXT. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I wish they had... Some of them have... Uh, a thing in the back that tells you when the uniform was worn. So this isn't Roxanne Perez. Cora Jade had that uniform a lot. So that I appreciate that she has worn kind of the same thing a little bit. I maybe maybe she doesn't. She wears a lot of different stuff, but it feels like she's worn that more than once, and it feels like she's only worn that once for Roxanne Perez. Of course, she comes with the belt, so this is during her title reign. So this was probably a pay-per-view outfit. Uh, I'm not sure. And Cora Jade, it looks like this is from her uh, time as a as a good guy, uh, as a face character. Both of these were from their first their time as a face character. Of course, as both of these have come out, they've both broken bad, and they've both uh, are heels now. But this is back when they were. Back in the old days when they were still good guys. But it's very, very cool. Cora Jade and, and uh, Roxanne Perez. Awesome side images. And, of course, the back that has the, the uniform that they are wearing on the figure. And, of course, neither one of them have exactly when that was taken. You'd have to kind of look through it a little bit. And Cora Jade it says, first time in the line... Roxanne Perez does not. The, the the Roxanne Perez not saying it is bothering me. <laughs> I don't know why. It just is. I didn't get any of the other figures in the either of the lines. Uh, I only got Roxanne Perez and Cora and Cora Jade. I was really really tempted to get Grayson Waller. Uh, I have some Usos, I think, and I did get a Sami Zayn, but I. I don't remember when. It is cool that they have a Chad Gable and Otis one wave apart and a solo so that you can get almost the complete bloodline in, in two waves. That's kind of cool. They usually space that stuff out quite a bit, which I I hate. Like, I hate that they'll do, like, a Jim the Anvil Nightheart and then six years later they'll be like, a, oh, here's Hitman. And you're like, oh, I didn't get him because you didn't give me the other one and now I got to chase down the other one. Boo, boo for bad planning on my part, apparently. So these two are really cool in the package. They're great wrestlers. Let's break them out. And let's take a look at them in person. And here they are out of the package. Former best friends 
at least for storyline purposes, <laughs> Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade. Uh, I did a search to see um, sort of their proportions a little bit better on um, Google, and I came up with a match at Heat Wave in August of 2022 where Roxanne Perez is wearing what she's wearing there. Cora was all in black, so I didn't get a I didn't get any indication of what uniform that's from. But Roxanne was wearing white boots during that match at Heat Wave. And I don't think that she was women's champion at the time. But it does comport to what I was thinking, which was the bright colors on on Roxanne Perez's costume sort of look like that NXT 2.0. As well as right on the title has all of the different colors that kind of look like kind of look like graffiti paint and it has that kind of kind of look like like straight up 2.0 colors for NXT. And of course they've switched back to the black and gold brand, which I'm sure we're all uh, a lot happier about. The the black and gold is classic and and I I liked I I didn't like NXT 2.0. 2.0. I didn't like the 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 bright colors and I didn't like the personality changes and things. It felt like it felt like it was a whole brand new product, and that they were throwing some of the personalities and things out of, out of the out of the window, which I didn't super appreciate. But let's let's ignore that. Let's the the reason that I was looking was there's no reference on the package to Roxanne's um, lower half on the picture in the package, but those thighs looked really muscular and defined. So I watched uh, a couple. Well, I watched that match a little bit and. Her thighs are big, and they are there. There's no doubt that she's powerful. You know, she's she's got a lot of strength in those legs, but they're not as defined as that. And on the other hand, Cora Jade's proportions are a little off too. She should be a little bit wider, maybe in the legs. The legs are, you know, both of them are real muscular, but they're not, you know, sort of that cut up muscular. They're just those women that can pick up. A 300 pound human being and, and throw them over the ropes if they wanted to but they're not necessarily you know they don't necessarily appear like bodybuilders so but that could have been put on to make Roxanne a little bit shorter than Cora Jade and a little bit shorter than the other women those thighs could have been something that just they, they just shortened they shortened the figure a little bit so it doesn't really bother me her legs are, are kind of that big you know, I have no doubt that she's powerful enough to press slam a Mack truck, but but for purposes, I was like, well, I don't know. The lower legs kind of seem a little seem a little bulky, but the rest from the match, like she was wearing this exact outfit with the one sleeve completed and the one sort of um, off the shoulder and over here, and of course the one I was telling you about from Heat Wave. The only difference was she wore white boots, and that was really cool. So she's got a really cool thing on the back. I didn't see the back. I wasn't where I wasn't paying attention to the back. You don't get that view very often. So let's let's start with Cora, who I left in the pose from the package. You see, with all the the punk, like, yeah, man, what's up? You know, which she absolutely does. I love it when they they incorporate sort of what the characters can do or do with their hands. And into the figure. I like that. It's a nice tattoo on the side. I think that's uh, two tattoos. There's one right on her. Uh, I don't know what you call that. An endo? There's an elbow and maybe that's an endo. I don't know. I know she has one on her chest because it's on the on the packaging. But I, I don't know what it says. I can look on the packaging, I suppose. Starved, something ego, feed, something soul. I'm sure it's a quote, maybe from a song or something. Actually, that's not bad. I can make out the starved ego and feed soul, even if I can't make out the rest of it. That's how it, this is how it looks on the figures. I can, I can shrink back and show you that this is the figure and not the not the packaging for the figure. So it's really nice translation of the tattoos. You get that a little bit clearer. And that a lot clearer. As for the one on the endo. 
I'm not sure about this three, two, one. Let me see if I can straighten that or if I can bend it a little. It looks like a hand that has the pinky under the chin of a dog. Some of you are laughing. I don't know if that's right. Well, oh, two skeleton hands? I have no idea what that is. But it's good. There's a, like an E and a V in there. It could be a word. I'm just not sure what that says. Generation of Jade, right on the right on the tights. Even though they're not silver or anything, the the spike effect on her hat is very cool. Still looks very very textured, very cool. But it doesn't hurt, and I, there's still going to be a lot of kids picking this up. And playing with it, so it's good that it doesn't have anything that that overtly hurts. Though the because it's elite, the cap should probably come off. Maybe besides her rocker hands, she has two grip hands for gripping, and of course she has the kendo stick, a cool kind of yellow line through it. I can't remember what the significance of that was. She picked that up during a feud, maybe. It's a little bent from the packaging but nothing you can't you can't straighten out but this this is crooked on purpose it's sort of the line comes here and then sort of jags so it's not a it's not a bend in the in the thing otherwise it would point i guess it could be i guess it could be but it's cool it's a really cool accessory for jade of course she's been known to bring a baseball bat so that would have been cool as well of course, Roxanne Perez has two grabby hands and two fists for when she wants to punch people. And the most important accessory of all, which is the NXT Women's Championship belt, which was really easy to put on her. The belt itself, very NXT 2.0, very um, from that era. The colors are very cool on it. it has all the kind of the rainbow colors on it. It just, it has this really cool point of difference. And I know I said, like, I didn't really like the that kind of period, but we did get to see a Roxanne Perez title run, and it was it was really cool. I mean, there were some characters that kind of stepped forward, and they were brand, brand new, and we didn't see much of them. I don't remember seeing Roxanne Perez prominently until NXT 2.0. It was probably the Braun Breaker stuff that I was like, well, eh. He took the title from somebody, and I, I, could, I can't remember, but I was thinking, that person hasn't held the title very long, and who's this new guy? He just takes the title right away. It's weird. So there's no build for Braun Breaker. It's like, he's just, he's champion. And now that he's not champion, he's he's a tag team guy. And with Baron Corbin, that's kind of how far, you know, he's, he's sort of gotten. So it was kind of all at once, so it wasn't... Like there was a crescendo. It's like he started hot and just got kind of cold. So I don't. That's that's kind of neither here nor there. So the NXT Women's Title is super cool. I like that a lot. There seems to be like, I don't know if that's on. Per, there was some sort of like little damage there. It could just be imperfections with the figure, but the title belt looks amazing. Even just miniaturized, it looks really incredible. That must have been a blast to carry around. And while it's not a great likeness of Roxanne Perez, the the smile is a little. Uh, it it's absolutely authentic to to who the character is, but it doesn't look a whole lot like her. I don't think. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe it's absolutely faithful. It's hard because lately she's been a heel and she hasn't smiled at all, so it's been a little bit weird. I like the. The laces on the side, which was very faithful to the match that I watched. The colors throughout all of the uniform. And the uniform that kind of looks like a ref's uniform. It's very cool. This part I didn't catch in the match. This part is... is uh, These lines are molded on. They're not just painted on. They're molded on. So that's really cool because somebody has to, to mold... The, like uh, a women's top like this is not unusual but the hole in it with the laces through it is so somebody had to have sculpted that just for the roxanne perez figure 
which is a really cool because you know she's she's a women's champ and you know she's you know deserving of, of, of a costume that absolutely matches and and a lot of the purists would go hey man that doesn't exactly match what what happened in the match and they could call up the exact time that these matches are from but for me for my purposes these outfits are amazing these two wrestlers are amazing the figures are amazing the like I said the maybe the thighs on on Roxanne Perez are a little are a little bit large they're a little bit muscular she's not as defined but there's no doubt in my mind that that she has those muscles under there they're just not as as defined and as for Cora Jade she's more muscular than uh I mean, she looks she looks just like she does uh, on television, but she also could press slam a Mack truck, so no problem with muscle there. So until next time, and until I get some more wrestling figures, enjoy your toys.